Proverbs chapter 13, and we left off with verse 13. As we go through Proverbs, excuse me for my voice in that one, we're at a point in Proverbs where a contrast. Is it right? Is it wrong? And what we can use, what we can learn as Christians, looking at Proverbs, is looking at that one verse and verses in context to see how is my life with God? Which side of that verse do I stand on? Am I right or I'm wrong? You got to realize, you know, you can be saved and I'm saved. And there are passages when I come across the scripture, I've sinned. I've done the bad side of the verse. And I need to confess my sin. Verse 13. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. He that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Where do you stand with that verse? Where do you stand with that verse with a modern Bible that is not a King James Bible? You despise the Word of God. Yes, I'm one of them people to say, only the King James. And if you don't have a King James 1611, I got to say King James 1611. I read somewhere that there's a King James 2000 something. You despise the very Word of God. And you'll be destroyed. You won't lose your soul, but everything you have accomplished in life with a perverted Bible would be wood, hay, or stubble, and that's a law. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded, and the Bible says many commandments to Christians to do. And there is a reward for doing what God told you to do. And there's destruction is if you despise what God tells you to do. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. Jesus said, I am the water of life. To depart from the snares of death. Law keeps you alive. I don't like the speed limit law. Well, you drive the safe speed that is prescribed by the law and the circumstances of the road and where that road is, you have great chances of living longer. You go running through red lights and all that, your life expectancy is going to be cut off. Or you may face the red and purple and blue lights and get yourself a, a ticket. And the snares of death. Things that will get you into a life of death. Again, it's it, it, it sex. Non-marital bed sex. It, it's tobacco, alcohol, drugs, and even legal drugs. It's amazing... You know, all the times I've been in the hospital and, you know, you watch the TV in the hospital and doctor's offices and they got the TV on and they'll advertise a, a brand of medication and, man, you got two hours of side effects and it, it, I don't mean to be comical, but some of the side effects of the medication, it can cause death. Advise your doctor for that. No! There's a snare of death when you despise the word of God into what God has told you to live. And that goes back to 1313. 13. There are things in the world that will trap you and will catch you into death. Verse 15. Good understanding, so there must be a bad understanding, giveth favor. But the way of the transgressors is hard. So good understanding is opposed to transgressors.
And the way of sinners is much more hardest than the way of Christians. And I've had people come up to me, well, you know, if I got saved, I'd do what you tell me to do with the Bible. It's going to be a hard, miserable life, and I won't be able to do it. And it is a fun, enjoyable life. Man, I, when it comes to doing what God has told me to do, I rejoice afterwards. And some say, I, I see pictures of before and after pictures of people involved in alcohol and get fully forced into alcohol. I see people who started their life without uh, meth. And then their life after meth and certain drugs. I mean, there are some people you look at, you look at their face and that's an alcohol. That is a drug. Or that is somebody who has a hard life. And when you get a Christian woman who, who, who loves the Lord and to be praised like Proverbs 31, she could have a beauty that the world would never acknowledge. And some would say she may be as homely as anything, but the beauty of the Lord makes her shine. And sin will give you a hard life and will give you a hard facial expression. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. All right, you're either prudent or you're a fool. Well, I don't know how, I'm a Christian, I don't know how to witness to others. You're a fool. I'm a Christian, I don't know what the rapture is. You're a fool. I'm a Christian, I don't read my Bible. You're a fool. Stop being a fool and study your Bible and read out your Bible and find out. Become unfoolish and then be prudent. A fool lies out their folly. They just spell out, I'm a fool. I had a woman today at the farmer's market. She announced very loud that she was foolish and she don't listen and she's got a big mouth. And I told her to shut up and I told her she needs to listen. That woman come walking around the corner from a booth and said, and you're the only one going to heaven. I said, man, shut up. You don't listen. You're a fool. In the six plus years I've been here, I never said I'm the only one going to heaven. And if I'm the only one going to heaven, what on earth am I doing here? I told a woman to shut up and open her ears and to hear what I said and explain to the people what I have said. That woman announced her foolishness. And the prudence that God has given me Tell the woman to shut up. That's not nice. Yes, you tell them to shut up because they have no business talking. And then you explain what you do say. And it's not called anger. And it's not cruel. It's called proper defense. And that goes on in the courtroom. Your Honor, he said that I said, no, I did not say that. I got witnesses to say I did not say that. Are you a Christian and you're just open to folly? That's not a good Christian. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is hell. Where do you stand, wicked or faithful? Well, I, I, I'm faithful. I'm a Christian. What message do you bring? What do you mean? Well, just say this prayer, you're going to heaven. That's a wicked message. That's called easy believism. That does not get anybody into heaven. 
Well, you know, to go to you don't really have to repent. Just invite Christ into your life. And, you're a wicked messenger. And that's that's mischief. A wicked messenger will bring a message that is not the gospel according to the Bible. A wicked messenger has anything but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. A wicked messenger, we already said in verse 13, he will bring to you a perverted Bible. He will quote from the NIV, the ASB, and all the other CRAP Bibles. They didn't say crap. Would I go so far to say if a somebody quotes from another Bible? Absolutely correct. If it's not the 1611 King James, you are a wicked messenger. And it's going to bring forth mischief. But the faithful ambassador, that's the first time ambassador shows up, is hell. There are many who don't realize the love of God that I do go Saturday morning and preach the gospel, and that's health to them. And they were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel message that I have and put their faith and belief in that. That gives them eternal life. And with that eternal life, not only do you become a child of the Almighty God, but health. No more pain or sorrow when you get into New Jerusalem. No more death. No more disease in New Jerusalem. God's got the greatest health care plan ever that no Republican or Democrat or government official can be. The greatest health care is through Jesus Christ. And if you carry that message to a dying, forsaken world that is dark, and they believe, you brought them help. And it's all free. You don't need card. You don't need a copay. So do you the wicked messenger or are you the faithful ambassador? What you stand? What is your message of salvation? Again, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to re-say it just so you know. Just say this prayer. It is general no hell, no sin, and you can go to heaven. That's a wicked messenger. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. Poverty and shame in opposed to a person being honored. Now the world honors the poverty and the shameful. That's contrary to the scripture. The fools at the television and the radio and the media, look at this great person. And I say, look at the people that violate the scripture. And the instruction of a poverty or shameful person, is, this is what you're supposed to do and they don't do it. It is to their poverty and to their shame. And again, whatever, however you are, if you are involved in a public ministry of preaching the right, correct Bible and gospel, and they refuse your instruction on how to be saved, well, they could be the richest people on the earth in the eternal life. They could be the poorest. And most shameful people. Imagine a person walking around in New Jerusalem. And he has no crowns at all. He's in poverty. And he'll have shame. Because he did not go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, he did it with another Bible. Well, a wicked messenger falls into mischief. He came with a prosperity gospel, and the wicked message shall have mischief. That's all wood, hay, and stubble. 
But if he regards reproof, hey, you're doing it wrong. This is not the right way. This is what the Bible says to do. This is what you're supposed to be doing. You will be honored by God. Gold, silver, precious stones, well done. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. But it's an abomination to fools to depart from evil. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Finish what you start. Don't give up. Don't quit. And when you achieve what you set for, if it's good and right and proper, the satisfaction you will have. But, in the King James 1611 Bible, there are 245 buts in the book of Proverbs. There are 3,994 buts throughout the whole Bible. And as we're studying these chapters here of right and wrong, yea and nay, righteous and unrighteous, that but means, hey, here's something, here's something else. That but is, okay, where do you stand? You stand on what is wrong, or you stand on what is right. That but, I'm trying to remember levels and all that when I went to school. I, th I think it's called the fulcrum. You know, you got the platform, and the fulcrum is right where, you know, it teeters either way. I believe it's called fulcrum. And the, the, the verses here were to say, all right, there's the fulcrum. That's the right word. Now, do you lean more to the right or you lean more to the left? Do you more lead to the holiness and righteousness or do you lead more to the unrighteousness and unholiness? Now, it's abomination to fools that depart from evil. I'm going to tell you, I, may, I, I can use the illustrations because I am a public witness. And when I tell them how to get saved and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there are some people, all the world's going to get saved. No, this is an abomination for them to do what the Bible says to do. And I've met those people and I've dealt with those people and I will meet more of those people. You can hold your breath to your blue. And there will be people that will never get right and come out of their evil. That's an abomination. And you know what's sorry? Don't say it. I'm going to say it. You know what's sorry for a Christian? Is when they will keep the evil and what the Bible says is wrong. I'm going to say it. And the Bible says it's wrong, but they keep the evil. I'm going to do whatever I do because we like it. You see, Jeremiah chapter 10 is not the Christmas tree. And we're going to keep the Christmas tree. What does Jeremiah 10 say? It's a heathen practice. And I'll say, you know, you're not to have regard to it. Yeah, but you ought not to be having it. You know how many studies I have put on video that I am doing to show to you that December 25th has nothing to do with Jesus Christ and actually has to do with the devil and Satan. And there will be still churches who have been alerted to what Stiley has said and with the information that Stiley has given. Well, we're still going to keep it. It's an abomination, though they won't say it like that. We're not going to depart from Christmas and Easter. We'll put a side note. We know this is not the day that Jesus was born. And then you're going to turn around and give birthday presents to Jesus. What? That'd be like me going up to the fast food restaurant. And they say, well, uh, may I take your, your order? Thank you for me. Yes, I like to have a hot fudge sundae with nuts on it. All right, that'd be 
X amount of dollars. Please drive through and, and pay, and, and we'll pick up your. And I come through, I pay, and I get my order. And I, I look at it, it's only vanilla ice cream. Well, where's the hot chocolate and where's the nuts? Well, we don't, we're not going to put that on there because, you know, it's fattening and calories and all that. That's not what I wanted. And for a church and for a Christian to do what opposes to what the Bible and tradition and history And they will never get right and have that revival. It's an abomination. They're a fool. And they won't leave their evil, though they say it's a church activity. Oh, and you know, you just got angry with what I said. Don't be angry with me. Get angry with the Bible. And there are churches that they're never going to leave the truth because we like it. You know one of the phrases that will set the fire of hell, that will set the fire of the judgment seat of Christ? I like it. Because I like it is above what God says to do. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Hey, that's hard. To, the Bible's hard to understand. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. That Bible saying right there. Watch who you walk with. I'm going to say it. I don't walk with everybody who says they're a Christian. Because there are many people who profess to be a Christian and they're fools. I'm not walking with them. And there's another word that we have. It's called the lowest common denominator. Things don't get better. It gets worse. You put a bad apple in a bushel of apples, that bad apple ain't going to get healthy and juicy and, and good to eat. No, the other apples are going to get worse. And if you want to be wise, you better walk with the wise and not the foolish. Well, how do I know the wise and the foolish? Read and study your Bible. I'll tell you right now, there's one thing for Christians. I mean, I'll associate with them, but I ain't going to power around with them. Number one thing for Christians I don't power around with. I'll associate. I don't read my Bible. Full. Would you like me to hand you a sign now? Or would you like to see your burnt rewards at the judgment seat of Christ? I mean, I, I can go into business. I can make two signs and then just hand them out for free. Stupid signs and foolish signs. Stupid signs for the people in the world and foolish signs for Christians. I let my light shine. Show me the scripture where it says that. Well, it, 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 yeah. It, the Bible says you are a light, uh, you are a city that's a light set on the hill. But the Bible also says go in all the world and preach the gospel. The Bible tells us that Paul walked up to an idol in Greece and said, Hey, people, you see your idol? Let me show you the real God. I guarantee some people got offended that afternoon. Paul's like, oh, well. Hang around with fools, you'll be destroyed. Your works and everything. That's what America's doing today. They're uprising foolish people. We're moving from a Christian nation. Yes, we were a Christian nation. And we're going to be, we're on the road to a foolish nation soon.
evil pursueth sinners. But to the righteous, good shall be repaid. All right, are you a sinner? Well, we're all sinners. Okay, righteous. Evil is the consequence of sin. Let me give you some examples. Cirrhosis of the liver is because you drank too much alcohol. Lung cancer, COPD, oh, I have. E emphysema, I got emphysema, are because you involved in smoking tobacco products. A VD, a venereal disease, is because you slept with the wrong person. That's the evil that pursues the sinner. And the righteous is you flee your sin. If you don't sin, and we all sin, but if you say no to your sin and, and avoid the sin, you will be repaid with good. God will reward you for saying no to sin. John says in the epistle, uh, first John chapter 2, sin not. But if any man sin, he has an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do sin, we've got the consequences of sin. And when you're fooling around, and you're hopping beds and beds that you shouldn't be hopping in. And then when somebody comes knocking on your door and say, Hi, Daddy. Listen, this whole abortion issue is under one issue. You did not need to get in that bed with that man. Now, if you had done what the Bible said to do and properly lived your life, you wouldn't have the consequences. A good man, I go right back to what we just read in 21. Righteous good. A good man leaves inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of sinner is laid up for the just. If you are capable of anything of inheritance to your sons and daughters and their children, that's commanded by the Bible. That inheritance in the Old Testament in the time of Solomon, that inheritance would be the land that God gave the children of Israel. And that land given to the children of Israel would have passed from the man to his son, to his son's sons, to his son's son's sons, Sun, 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 sun. Listen, that prodigal son that we read about, the father had the inheritance for both the sons. One just wanted inheritance earlier than expected. There is nothing wrong in the Bible to lay something up for your children if you're capable and the way things are in the economy today, that's hard. The wealth of a sinner is laid up for the just. He doesn't use it for himself. God will find the use of a, of a wicked man's money and resources for the glorification of his children. I forget the name, but there was a man that, that this was totally against the Bible. And he foolishly said, within a certain amount of years, you would never hear the Bible. There would be no Bible. And the guy died. And his house was turned into a printing house for the Bible. And it outlasted his life. Much food is in the tillage of the poor. But there is that 
is destroyed for the want of judgment. Much, a lot of food is the tillage of the poor. But there is that which destroyeth for want of judgment. You can have excess of food. You can have a great cop crop. Like that man Jesus said, oh, I'm going to tear down my bonds. And I'm going to say, I'm going to build bigger and say, so be at rest and be at, God uh, please is great. And God says, thou fool. <laughs> Your life will be required and you will face judgment. And then again, if somebody who has excessive and there's been a crime committed against that person and the, the, the judgment and the justice system ill favors that man, such as a bunch of people going out and in peaceful demonstrations of burning other people's property and other people's goods and other people's homes and businesses. There was a guy who had a big business with inventory. I'm not going to say what the business was. And I was assumed with the business he, he was making a living. And then came these peaceful demonstrators and burnt his whole business and his inventory down. And the failure of the justice system is that happened months ago. And the guy had inventory. The guy had an, an income. Now he's got nothing at all. And the failure lies in the great government that we're to vote for. I had to say that. And it's only going to get worse. Because even now, the President of the United States is caving in to those people. And, and we're going to do more for them. We're going to do more for them because he wants their vote. And he has now adjusted to get the vote of criminals so he can get another four years and the Christians are going to go, oh, oh, yeah, he's the greatest. And he just shifted his whole platform to a bunch of people who are illegal and stand against justice. Which means a lot more people who are civilized a lot more people who obey the government, a lot more people that are law-abiding citizens are going to lose out even more. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. I don't correct my children, and I love them. The Bible says, no, you don't. I give them time out. That's not what the Bible says. I count the three in decimals of point one. One point one, one point one point one, two point one, two point one one. That's the problem with what you got with these idiots running around the world today with crime. Now it says he that spareth the rod, it, it does not say belt. All right, now I just ruined a whole bunch of Baptists. My daddy's belt. I gave my children the belt. It don't say belt. I didn't do it often, but I did. It. When I cracked my children, they had a rod. My, my rod was a flat rod, but it was a rod. 
It doesn't say he just buries his hand and smacks. Listen, we want to do right by the Bible. We got to do what the Bible says. It doesn't say belt and doesn't say hand. It says he that spares a rod hateth his son. If you don't chastise your children, you hate your children. Whatever Dr. Spock and whatever, you know, the, the children health fair and all that other crap and all the, you know, the psychologists. That's what the Bible says. Can't, I guarantee another Bible probably says something totally opposite, different. Let's see. Let's, let's take a look at that. Proper 13. Way down. Uh, actually, I have to bring up this one. Let's see if I can bring it up. It's hard to see. This is proper. Let's just take a look at this one. Let's just see. Thirteen point uh, twenty-four. Maybe I get an idea. If I get it, I, I get it. If I don't, that's right, right. All right. Let's see. Other English translations. Uh, rod, 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 stick. Nothing. Rod, rod, <coughs> rod. <coughs> rod, rod, punish. Rod, spank. No rod. Rod, nothing. Cut short. Uh, rod, rod, discipline. Correct. Rod, spank. Rod, rod. Gee, you know, most of the modern Bibles say rod also. Oh, uh, what's the good news? Good news. Even the good news says rod. <laughs> so let me tell you, whatever Bible you do have, you're without excuse. They say rod. Except for a couple of them. And those couples were oddball ones. But he that loveth him, his son, chasing him, be B times. What does B times mean? As often as you can. I'm guilty of that. I didn't punish my children as much. And my son, well, maybe it's my fault. So I'm not going to honor myself on Father's Day when I don't say what the scriptures say to say. Don't you get up on, I'm a father, I, <laughs> I used a bell. R-O-D-B-E-L-T. I'm a King James Bible-believing Christian. R-O-D. I don't like that style. I don't like what he teaches. I don't like what he preaches. Why? Because I read the B-I-B-L-E? I'll be the first one to say when my when my children fail, it's because of me. And we got more verses coming up in Proverbs about correcting your children. I'll tell you another thing with my wife, Lisa, who, who we had the children with. I'll tell you something with Lisa before she died. When it came to discipline the, the children, the Bible said the father. It didn't say the mother. She come to me and said, your son. I said, oh boy. Mama didn't do it. He that spareth the rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chases him be time. What is he? I'll give you a clue. It's M-A-L-E. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul. 
But the belly of the wicked shall want. Well, uh, they got all the food. They got all. The Father Abraham, can you have Lazarus just go and tip his finger in a dip of water so I can cool my tongue in this flame of torment? Now, if that's literal belly, which I believe, you know, why should it not be belly? And if I know where the wicked are going to go without Jesus Christ, if I were to apply the application correctly, not only does that rich man and all people in hell want that little drop of water to cool their tongue, but it possibly, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong. It's possibly it looks like the people in hell will have an appetite for food and they'll never get it. Wow, that's torture. For not believing on Jesus. Now there are Baptists that say we're going to get to heaven, we're going to feast, and we're going to have meals, and we're going to dine. And I don't know. I know there's a marriage supper to land. It'd be interesting for those that are saved if we do eat, while those that are in hell can't eat and want to eat. What do you do with a man? What do you do with that rich man that's been in hell since Jesus has been living? And let's say 30 A.D. approximately. And we're in 2020. Well, I, I like even numbers. Let's say that the Jesus, the, the rich man that Jesus, let's talk about 0 A.D. I like even numbers. I don't have to really get my, take off my shoes and start counting with my toes. Let's say... 2020 years later. Let's say a man that has entered hell when Jesus was born, 0 AD. Maybe not that rich man. Let's say another man. It's been 2020 years, and if each if this is correct. All the people that have had meals on this earth, and that guy's like, oh, I wish I could eat. Oh, we can just have a drop of water. The righteous eat it to the satisfaction. The righteous, all that God has given us to eat. And yet we have our fastings, and we have our starvings, like Paul said. Listen, I fast off, and then he said, I had times that I was without food and without water. Paul had a time with food and water. Lord God, I'm going to restrain myself for your glory. And then there was some time, uh, there was no food. There was no water. Because there was no food and there was no water. In hell, there is no food, food and there is no water. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved.